Hey guys, this is Matt, and I'm back with Master's Tutorial, where I'm going to be going over a program that I made for my parallel class. Taking a look at the screen, we have a uh, we have a canvas, so we're using the new Unity 4.6 uh, with their new UI system. So we're using Canvas, and inside of there we have two panels. Uh, one has a user interface, and then the other is just a uh, a legend. Uh, you know, displays information to whoever's using it. And then this uh, this event system, I think that's what the buttons are using to uh, call uh, to call all these on clicks and set all those triggers. Uh, so after the canvas, we are so we're making a grid, and so I have another tutorial over how I make a, uh, a game object or a no game object grid. So I'll put a link to that. Uh, basically, we have a left and a right bounds. So the top left and bottom right, and we're going to make a grid uh, between those two bounds. And then we have a map, so that's just a plane to uh, display the grid on. And we have a map script on it, and it has a size X and a size Z. So that tells you how many nodes are going to be in between, uh, are, that are going to make up the grid, basically. And then we have a gap. So that's going to be the distance between, uh, basically the corridor distance of the maze that gets generated. The number of doors, so the number of door doors uh, on each uh, segment of maze that gets created. And uh, let's see, we'll go in and take a look at, the, at that in just a second. So then we have a main camera, and it has our movement script on it, just so we can move around. And then just a directional light to light everything up. So let's uh, actually play the program. And oh, and we start off with a unwalkable maze. So we can just generate a new maze with the UI. And there we have a maze that got created and uh, was able to find a path using the sequential A star algorithm. And that's the one that we're going to be uh, discussing. Uh, the changes that I made to my, uh, my own A star algorithm, and then just going over some of this uh, user, uh, user element stuff in here. Uh, so you notice uh, right away it's made up of these grids, different colored grids, and that's what the legend is for. So the red grids are the nodes that are in the closed set of the A star algorithm or in the bidirectional A star first thread. And then the purplish nodes are the nodes that are in the open set of uh, the sequential A star or the first thread of the bidirectional A star. So that's what those represent. And we also, if you look and zoom in on these nodes, you'll see a little uh, T shape here, and they actually point towards the parent of that node. So you look in, like here at this door, it gets a little interesting. So everything points towards the last node, and it basically shows you uh, what the shortest path to that node would be if you were to follow these arrows here. And they would uh, all lead back up to, yeah, right there to the parent. And so that's kind of a cool thing just to visualize uh, what that node is. And then if you also zoom in, you'll see that it has a, a G score, the H score, and the F score of that uh, individual node, as in for all of them. So it's just a lot of information that each node is displaying. And uh, then you actually see the path in blue from the upper corner to the bottom corner. And now going over to the uh, UI here, we have the rerun algorithm. So that just reruns the same the the same maze with whatever algorithm you have selected. And then you also have the generate maze button, and that just creates a whole new maze and reruns the program that's selected. Uh, one thing that's kind of neat is you have this tracing option. So you hit tracing, restarts the algorithm, and now you notice it uh, enabled these buttons which were disabled before and now you have the ability to trace through the sequential A star algorithm whichever one you had selected so you can step forward notice that the yellow node is the node that's being expanded while you're tr doing the tracing so you can keep stepping and it basically just shows you what the algorithm does which nodes get expanded and in what order so you get a better idea of how the algorithm's actually working. And you can go in and take a look at the numbers and you say, okay, well, it's going to find this one, that one, and uh, it's also going to update those values. And there it goes. 
So you can take a look and uh, look at all that. And you also have this step back. So say you're looking at everything and well, okay, we missed something back there. So then you can just do the step back. And now you're going back there. And that's kind of a neat, uh, neat ability that I haven't seen in any, uh, any other tracing, tracing functions. And so you notice that whenever you click on the map, a node, the, whatever node you click on turns this orange color and that represents the selected node. So you're tracing along, but you really want to know what happens in this area. You don't want to have to click the step forward button. So you can uh, select that node and then press the con continue to selected node button. And that's going to expand, run the algorithm until it comes across this node, the node that was selected. And then you can continue from there. Or you could step back from there. It doesn't matter. So those are some of the, the cool uh, user elements that I added. And then you turn off tracing, goes ahead, finish, finishes the algorithm. And uh, just a little uh, sneak peek at this bidirectional. Won't be going over this in the code just yet. I'll be making another tutorial since uh, it's going to be a little bit longer than normal. But, you know, you have the same options, just stepping and stuff, so it's pretty neat. But let's go and take a look at some code. All right, so we're going to start in the map script. And uh, first thing we're going to take a look at, I guess we're going to look at these uh, property values here. So these are the just step forward, step back, continued, repeat, uh, basically all the user control variables that are public, they're being manipulated by uh, all of these buttons in here, which Unity does, uh, has, a, has a really neat feature that uh, it's just really easy to use. So you put your script, whatever script you need, uh, into these little runtime objects. And so I put my map in there, and then you have access to uh, map. Then you have all of the variables that are inside of it. So you can just say every time the button gets pressed, uh, toggle repeat to on. So that's going to uh, set repeat to true. So now uh, what I was doing before with NGUI is having scripts for each button and running on click uh, methods and uh, you know having a one script per button really uh, increases the, the total number of scripts in your project. So I think that's really cool. Uh, I'm really impressed with uh, the ease of use of the new GUI system so far. Uh, I know I've only scratched the surface of what you can do, but so far it's, it's looking good. All right, so uh, this is really similar to the other tutorials that I've done. I took a lot of what I did for the tower defense tutorial series and just uh, redid the A star pathfinding. So taking a quick look, we're going to build some nodes and uh, then we're going to uh, if the maze is disabled, then we're not going to make walls. We're not going to make the maze. But if uh, the, if we do want to make a maze, then we're going to go ahead and do it. We're going to just send it the uh, dimensions of our uh, world. And this is a recursive algorithm, and I'll make another tutorial to go over that. It's kind of neat. And then we just set our destination and uh, starting node. Still has the same name from the uh, tower defense tutorial series. And we're just going to make sure that they're both walkable because the uh, maze can sometimes make an unwalkable uh, area right at the be beginning and uh, makes it no good. So that fixes a lot of the situations. Then we go down to the start where we just initialize a lot of our variables. So a lot of our properties, we're just going to make sure that they're the right values. And then we come down to our sequential A. So we're going to make a new pathfinding sequential A star uh, reference. So going into it, we have the path that it creates, then it has a thread, which uh, is really nice. I really like threading in Unity. Uh, I know a lot of people don't use it because, you know, Unity isn't uh, thread safe is what I've been hearing a lot, but as long as you don't use the uh, Unity functions or a lot of them at least, then, then you can get by and it actually works really well. So then we just have some tracing uh, variables over in here, and a start and a goal. 
So we come to the constructor, it takes the starting node and the goal node, sets them for the script, and that's it. So then you have your sequential A reference, and you initialize the map with just the initial values. So let's take just a quick look. You uh, set the G scores, the F scores, and the parents to their initial values. Then also the open and isn't open and isn't closed. Set those to false. Check thread, that's uh, for the bidirectional. Is current, this is for uh, visualization purposes only. Doesn't really have an effect on the algorithm. And this is, the rest of it is all for the bidirectional. So we're not gonna go over that part yet. So after we initialize the map, we're actually going to start our coroutine. So this is what uh, runs sequential A star, or just that's one of the uh, properties that gets manipulated by the GUI button. So we're going to run start coroutine, run sequential A star algorithm, go into there. All it is is a coroutine, and it does the make thread. And then after that, the coroutine is going to query the sequential A uh, object, and it's going to ask if it's done. And if it's not done, then it's going to wait. And this basically just means it tries to do it as fast as possible, which is what I was going for. And then after it's done, it's going to draw whatever path it found. But inside of the make thread, so you have the thread that we made right there, so you basically make a thread start and then give it the algorithm you want it to run. So we're going to give it our A star algorithm that's in local inside of this thread, or this uh, script I mean. Uh, then we're going to make a new thread out of that thread start. And then you just do a thread.start. You can also set the priority of the thread since uh, the uh, Windows operating system, which is what I'm using, isn't uh, deterministic, I believe is the right term. So it's not going to guarantee that your thread's going to run, but you can you can make it a high priority. So uh, it's going to run before some of the other ones. But still, it, the operating system has the ability to say, "No, you're not going to run. I need to run this calculator instead." I don't know, something like that. So after we make our thread, uh, well, I guess that's it. So well, after we make our thread, that's whenever the A star starts running. So first you have your common, uh, just uh, if, it's the, if it is the start, if it is the goal, then return. If they're the same node, then return. And here we have our minimum heap. We're going to make our open set. We're going to put the start node inside of that open set. And is an open set true? We're going to set the G score and F score. This is all very similar to a, uh, another tutorial that I did on A star pathfinding, but I did make a crucial mistake in that tutorial that I'll be coming across soon. So this is a uh, this is a much better implementation of A star than than what I had in the past. So after we initialize with the start uh, number of steps, that's just used for tracing, and uh, have the current node equals null, and we're going to set that current node. And we're going to grab it out of the open set. And we're going to make it current, put it in the open set, take it out of the, make sure, or we're going to take it out of the open set, put it into the closed set. And then we have our little control logic statement here, which is uh, just what I use for the stepping. So we're going to uh, ignore that because it's not very interesting. Increase the number of steps, It take it out of the uh, current. So it's no longer the current, just because we've already passed our control logic, where, which is where it hangs up. It basically pauses in this area until you press the uh, step button, either forwards or backwards. If it equals the goal, then we're going to reconstruct the path, set done to true, and then return. And so that's going to break us out of our coroutine and then finally draw the path whenever we set done to true. Uh, but before we find the path, we're going to go through our node for each node neighbor inside of the current dot get neighbors. Then uh, if it 
if it equals to null, or if it uh, is not walkable, or if it's in the closed set, then we're going to go on to the next node. We're not going to process this one. We're going, but if it uh, is a node that we want to expand, then we're going to get the tentative G score of that node by doing the current dot G score plus the heuristic cost estimate of the from current to neighbor. Now, uh, this is something that I added from the last implementation that I did. Instead of this, basically gives you the distance because of the heuristic estimation that I'm doing. Uh, since you're getting the distance between one node and the node that's right next to it, if we go into the heuristic cost estimate, we're using a heuristic called a Chebyshev distance, uh, which is basically, if you think about a chessboard, which is the same kind of grid that we made in uh, for this, then the shortest path is uh, made out of diagonals and straight lines. So that's what this guy is doing. So we get our dx and dy. And uh, if the dx is bigger than dy, then we're going to simply take the diagonal of it, and then we're going to take the straight line of it by subtracting the dx and the dy. And then these are our distances, 10 and 14. So it's 14 for moving diagonally, and it's 10 for moving uh, horizontally or ver vertically. And uh, then we do the opposite of this if uh, that's not true. So something very simple, but uh, it ended up making things a lot easier. So it is the g-score plus the distance to the neighbor is the tentative g-score. If it's not in the open set, or if the tentative g-score is less than the neighbor's current g-score, then we're going to update that node. So the parent is going to be current, the g-score is now the tentative g-score, and then the f-score is just the g-score plus the actual heuristic cost estimation to the goal from the neighboring node. And now this is another place where I messed up in my previous implementation. If it is not in the open set, then we're going to add it to the open set and then set is is an open set to true. If it's not, uh, what I was doing previously was just falling through and going on to the next node. But I forgot that you have to reevaluate that node that you changed. So inside of my minimum heap, I added a reevaluate uh, method. And it is a very simple, uh, a very simple uh, method. It, it can be uh, improved, but Basically, it does a heap dot index of heap is just a list, and index of the element that you gave it gets the index. And then it does a bubble up from that index. And if you're familiar with uh, heaps and uh, minimum heaps, then that should make sense. But so pathfinding. Uh, that's about it. After that, if it goes through all the nodes and it hasn't found anything, then it fails, so done is true, and it returns, except the path is going to be null. I made some changes to the heap. I added a compare to method to the node itself, so instead of comparing them inside of the heap, you now do the compare to method of the node. And this is nice just because it makes it easy to, uh, it says, so it compares it, it, it will first compare it by the F score. But if the F score is the same, then it's going to use the, the H score, which is just the heuristic cost estimate for that node. And since I'm not actually keeping track of that inside of the node itself, uh, I'm just deriving it, since it's easy enough to do with, uh, if you have the F score and the G score, you just subtract the two. So you subtract them for the current node, and then you compare it to the node that's given. And then, obviously, otherwise, you're just going to compare the f-scores directly. So that's uh, just something easy that I put in there. It made it work a lot better. And I'm going to be going over the bidirectional algorithm next time. So stay tuned. Thanks.